If you're visiting London for the first time, then you're going to need to know how to use London's transport system. Today, I will run through the basics plus a few tips so you can be using the London transport system like a local. The first thing that you need to know is some of the slang or local terminology that we use. The most common one is tube. So the tube is the train that runs in the London Underground network. So we wouldn't call it a train, we'd say it's the tube. Call a tube station, which is a London Underground station, and that's where you catch the tube from. So tube is basically the replacement word for train and we will just interchange that with different words. The next one is TFL which stands for transport for London. There are a couple of modes of transport that we've already covered off the tube which is the underground network. Next is the buses so you'll get both double jacket buses and single story buses and they will all be red. Most people like to go on the double-decker buses right up to the front seat. So when you're going through London, you can see some of the iconic attractions. We then have what's called the National Rail. National Rail is the national service that runs through Scotland, Wales and England. And this is where you do majority of your long distance travel. And they do have services that go a bit further outside of London too. You will hear the overground which is slightly different than the underground. It's a whole overground network, but that is also run by TfL. Then we have a few other modes of transport. So we have the Thames Clipper. This is the ferry across the Thames. One of the ways that I recommend using the ferry is if you wanted to go from the Tower of London to Greenwich, it's a lot quicker route to get there. Next is the Emirates cable car. This is mainly a tourist attraction. Uh, we don't really use it too much as a local, but it is a little bit of fun to catch. And finally, we do have some trams. These are mainly run on the outer skirts of London. So if you're kind of staying central London, you won't see any trams at all. There are a couple of ways that you can get access to the London transport system. So one is an Oyster card, and no, it's not the slippery one. Um, that's a shellfish. It is this card here. Or you can use a contactless card. So a contactless card is one that you can just tap on and pay. Not all countries have access to this. Uh, so you need to double check whether your card is compatible with the contactless system. And if you've got Apple Pay or Google Pay on your phone, then you can also tap your phone. There is also a visitor's version of the Oyster card that you can buy and they will give you other discounts. So they might give you 10% off to the London Eye, for example. So that can be a good idea if you're looking for some savings on attractions and you can get sent the visit Oyster card to your home address before you arrive here. I'm just going to run you through how to buy an Oyster card and the options that you have available. So I'm just going to select get a new Oyster card and it goes into the number of Oyster cards that I wish to purchase. So I will go confirm. Now it gives you two options whether to do top up, pay as you go, or you buy a travel card. Which one should you get? Well, if you're only here for a couple of days, then I recommend getting the pay as you go. On both the Oyster and the contact list, they will apply daily capping. So if you take three or more journeys, then you'll be capped at the zonal prices. If you're only here for a day, then you might want to get a paper ticket, so a daily travel card, and this will give you full access to the network, both the trains and the buses. If you're here for more than five days, then I recommend getting a weekly pass. If you're using an Oyster card, then you'll need to add this manually to your card. So when you go to the machine, just select the seven day travel card option. If you're using a contactless card, which is a little tip, 
then this will automatically apply weekly capping. So this is one of the benefits over the Oyster card is this will just do it automatically for you. The reason I recommend getting a weekly card is this can save you like 15 to 20 pounds in the week, which is enough for a dinner out somewhere. So it's worth the money if you are here for a week. So for this show and tell, I'm just going to go pay as you go and add five pounds. As you can see, the total is now £10. You pay a £5 deposit for the Oyster card and then £5 for the credit. And then when you're ready to pay, you insert your card into the card reader. All right, removing my bank card. And now it's dispensing my Oyster. As you can see, you collected your Oyster. And then you need to touch on the yellow reader to activate and then it will tell your current balance. If you ever want to know how much is on your Oyster card then just come up to one of the machines and press on the yellow card reader and it will tell you your current balance and then you can top up or add a season ticket if you wish. If you plan on traveling around Great Britain and you want to save some extra cash then get a rail card. A rail card will give you a third off national rail, but the additional benefit is that you can add it to your Oyster card, which will give you a third off off peak fares. So you save even more money by adding your rail card to you. You can get a rail card if you are living overseas and you can also get one if you're living here locally. I'll leave the link in the description below on how you can go about getting a rail card. To quickly explain the tube map and the difference between the tube and national rail. So the solid lines mean that that is the TFL slash underground only. So the tube and the ones with the dotted lines means that that's national rail. So anything that's on this map that's in a zonal location will be included in oyster travel. So for example, you can get to Gatwick Airport and Heathrow, which is over here, um, using your Oyster card, but you can't get to an airport like Stansted, uh, which is up here, uh, as you can see, as it's out of the zonal location. So this map is really handy to get to know as it will cover everything that you need to know, read the pricings and where you can go with your Oyster card. Here you can see all the keys to the lines and the symbols. So here are all the lines that run on TFL and here are all the lines that run on National Rail prices and then you can see where the river boats are at uh, the coach stations and the airports and bus transfers to the airport now that you've got your oyster card let's show you how to use it so if you're using any of the rail networks so this includes the tube the overground or national rail they all work in the same way you tap into the station and you tap out of the station if you forget to tap in or out, then you may be charged with a penalty fare and this can be easily rectified on the TFL website. So for example, if I was going from Paddington to Bond Street and I forgot to tap out, then it would show on the website that I had a fare leaving from Paddington, but they didn't know where I exited. So I'll be charged the maximum fare. All I need to do is log on to the system and say that I went to Bond Street and then I'll be charged the appropriate fare. For buses, all you need to do is tap in once and that's it. They did bring an initiative a couple of years ago where you can catch uh, two buses within an hour. So that's super handy to know. For the Tams Clipper and the Emirates Cable Car, you tap on the yellow readers as well but this will be additional fares outside the daily and weekly capping. So you need to make sure that you have some more money on your card. If you are running low on money on your Oyster card, then you can get an emergency fare out of this, which will give you enough time to get home. So if you're on a night out and there is no ticketing office open for you to top up your Oyster card, then you can simply tap this on the bus and it will allow you to go into negative value. You will need to top it up the next day, but it's nice to know that you have a little bit of security 
uh, with your Oyster card. They have recently changed the rules on getting a refund for the Oyster card. So when you were leaving London previously, you could go to Heathrow Airport, tap the card on the card reader. It would return unpaid balances as well as the... However, since they're trying to reduce plastic, they've brought in a new rule where you will only get your deposit back after a year of having the card. So they'll automatically put the five pounds on here and that's how they're returning the money these days, which isn't great if you're a visitor. However, if you're living here, then you'll have five pounds on your card. Please note that you can't do this with the Visit London Oyster card. The five pounds is non-refundable. Let me know in the comments if there is anything else you would like to know about London's transport. This was a quick highlight tour. If you want to watch more London content, there's a video popping up now that you can watch.